Good morning, everyone. Hey, it's Pierre. Uh, so thanks for joining um, to this second stream today. So um, today I've just have a minor hardware issue on my main laptop. So I have no webcam activated. I have to use uh, my computer sound. Um, so apologize for that. Um, 
today we will speak about uh, Apex One to uh, sorry Office Scan to Apex One migration. Uh, so we'll have a deep dive in the in the various step to do that. And for this, I will invite in few seconds my guest uh, Tony uh, from Trend Micro too. Um, if you have any question, uh, feel free to uh, send it to the YouTube chat. Uh, and of course, uh, anytime, feel free to, if there is a point you want to know more, we're there for, for that. Okay, um, so let me invite my guest. Hey, Tony. Hello, Pierre. How are you? I'm good. Are you? Good, good. Wakey, wakey, lemon shaky. <laughs> Thanks for joining today. Um, so um, I would like to thank you for all the work and uh, for the stream preparation today first. So Tony, um, can you tell us a bit about what's your role in Trend Micro? Introduce yourself first. Yes, gladly. So I've been in Trend Micro three years almost doing professional services, helping our customers and uh, internal participants with the different kind of uh, products that we offer. Okay, so typically uh, Apex One, Office Scan, or Endpoint Solution, you used to that, I guess. Yes, basically everything. That's why you're there today. So great. Yes. Um, okay, okay. So what well, we will talk about Office Scan to Apex One migration, but especially to Apex One SaaS migration. So I think you prepared some content to share with us and some some demo later stage. Um, okay, and uh, so let me start to share uh, the agenda for today. So you can feel free to to present the agenda of um, what we will talk about, Tony. Yes, gladly. So we have a great product which is called Apex One. Uh, and it's a successor or next version of Office Scan. So what we have noticed in the field that we have lots of still lots of Office Scan installations around the world, especially in Europe. And we would like to offer a very uh, simplified uh, way of seeing how to migrate from Office Scan to Apex One as a service which is usually included on the uh, product suite licensing. <clears throat> so what we are going to talk about is um, uh, to see the differences first between Office Scan and Apex One, and especially Apex One as a service. Then we go through some uh, high-level migration steps, and after seeing those basic elements what need to be done we will demonstrate it on the, on our um, apex one service and i have also set up lab with um, office scan xg and couple of um, agents there which we will move to the apex one service okay so. good 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 so um... So first, we we talk about what's new, what's different with Apex One, right? Let's go. Yes. Okay, great. So here we see the difference between our, uh, let's say, legacy Office Can um, version. So it's a historical name of our endpoint uh, protection solution and with Apex One as a services. So um, what, 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 what's first, what's the difference in terms of architectures for you? Yes, so previously when Office Scan version, something very low appeared. And when we entered to Office Scan 11, that seems to be rather popular, that was upgraded to version 12, which was named to XG then. And um, for that particular agent, which handles 
basically primarily anti-malware functions. We had these additional um, agents because we integrated from the deep security this vulnerability protection agent. So that is something that you can add in a separate agent on the device. Then we have endpoint sensor if you want to do forensics on the endpoints and also application control as a separate agent. Yeah. And and now all of these are integrated features into Apex One, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So and it's called IVP, IES, IAC for integrated vulnerability protection, integrated endpoint sensor, integrated application control. Yeah. That's great. So but and in terms of architecture, so traditionally our customer of course deploy on premise. So meaning they have their own server, their own virtual machine, and they have to install everything themselves to maintain everything, to patch, to upgrade. And with Apex on our services, it's moved to the cloud. So we can see the benefit is server and software is all maintained by Trend Micro as a service. It's it's a service. Um, and we have always the question, it's based on, it's, it's, it's hosted on Azure and uh, high availability replicated on a cross region. So it's pretty European customer. They have European instance of Azure access. So this is a major difference, I guess. So, um, and, and for the other point, Tony? Yes, so configuration is, and policies are basically almost always done in um, Office Scan server itself. And some customers have adopted control manager where they can also do the policing on the Office Scan server and its agents. But in this um, Apex One feature, we have uh, Apex Central, which um, which is then the next generation of control manager. So those are integrated all together. As you can see on the lowest, I tried to put there some um, approvations what we are using quite often. So Office Camp became Apex One, Control Manager, Apex Central, and then the AO or AC as a service. But we usually talk about Apex as a service or Apex One as a service. And yeah. that is basically uh, Apex Central, which is the manager that is always there and which will be used only for doing policies. So you don't do any more policies on the Apex One console. Yeah, so everything is done on the uh, on the Apex Central, but in the case of Apex One as a services, we just call it Apex One anyway. It's a single UI, centralized UI and yeah. everything is there. Yeah. And also, I, I know that we have also refreshed the security policy management. So that is uh, more, uh, let's say, uh, administrator friendly and more uh, operational uh, optimized. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's great. So um, let's go. Uh, to, to there, there is something you wanted to mention also about the versioning. Well, basically that's about it we will see how it looks like okay and and, and about the versioning but currently out of support and what is supported in terms of scan so next yes. then we would like to mention this one so as me as a consultant within customers we often or occasionally see these Office Scan 11s there. So we would like to inform still that uh, this is out of support since last year, Service Pack 1. And uh, now it's good time to think about also migrating from Office Scan 12, which is this XG that has a pre-announcement of uh, end of support yeah. next year. I think it's a good point. It's a good point you raise here because we we still have some customer using eleven version, but it's out of support. Meaning, if they open a case because there's an issue, it's best effort on a side. And uh, because we have moved all our resource to XG and Apex One, 
as a product lifecycle. Um, so it's important to migrate. And, and as you mentioned here, it is have just one year more of support for uh, Office Kinetic G, so it's a good timing to migrate to Apex One anyway. Yeah, good reminder. Okay. Yeah, check a little bit to do on how to do. Okay. Yeah. Good. So this is high level migration plan for the Office Can users who are having uh, on premise. So I tried to put it very simple here. So uh, what we first want to check is the on premise infrastructure readiness. And by that, we, we mean then that um, access to our cloud services are permitted. We will go more in details into these stages or steps, but let's look here quickly how it looks like. So after verifying that connections can be made to the cloud, uh, we will check quickly also endpoint requirements. And um, then we see how to activate uh, Apex One as a service instance for customer. We will see how to synchronize on-premise Active Directory to send user and endpoint information to the cloud. And after that, we will check how to migrate um, legacy Office Can agent or server policies to Apex One as a service. And then finally, we will test with a couple of clients to, uh, to move those to Apex One as a service platform. So that's about it. Let's check on the first step. Yeah, you I, I, you wanted to raise about some specific consideration consideration to be sure about the successful migration. Yes, yeah. and this is specifically based on the experience what we've seen. So even if um, configuration or web user interfaces and everything are pretty much the same, but there are still some uh, some differences there, enhancements, so to say. So it's always good to familiarize with the user interface, so you can easily find find the settings there. And main main thing is obviously that Apex Central is the main console, so you should not need Apex One console that much. Um, always try to figure out a test user group, which have a mostly most different kind of setup, because every infrastructure tend to have their own home baked applications, and it's good to check that that those work and have proper policy settings. Also, inform end users. Sometimes it becomes a surprise when uh, endpoints start downloading a new agent, and it takes a while in this case as well until it's all fully functional. And keep um, run books and procedures updated for the support people. And now, when we move to the cloud, it means obviously that there will be more traffic from the inside network to the cloud and back during the um, updates and upgrades. So try to state these um, migrations so you don't move everything at once. So that's, that's what okay, I Okay, good. So now in details, now is a prerequisite I think you wanted. Yeah, that's it. Okay, good. Yeah, so a couple of main points here. So what we need to be sure then that um, if using firewalls um, or proxies or both, <clears throat> that you need to permit uh, then traffic to many different kind of star.trendmicro.com. 
services and everything is in the cloud and in this case in Azure cloud so there will be content delivery net networks with the different kind of IPs changing IPs so if your infrastructure is a old-fashioned firewall which needs to be opened there will be lots of IPs to maintain but here I tried to put a good uh, <clears throat> knowledge base article visible where you can check all the requirements yeah all of this all of this is well documented on a success knowledge base so we our customer when they start to use Apex on a services they can uh, find everything they need to open this uh, this traffic and and you mentioned one point about um, so an agent generates up to 22 megabyte traffic per day if I'm right Tony I think this is if all modules are activated and typically for example the endpoint sensor with the telemetry uh, capabilities but for example if a customer is not using uh, endpoint sensor is much less than that is even maybe less than one or two megabyte per day so but this is a let's say upper limit right it's exactly so but it's just good to know that yeah. when you're using all the features and yeah. nowadays internet bandwidth it should not be that much of a problem with the yeah. user base it's important to mention because it's a recurrent question we have and it's something to know uh, for our customer when they migrate to a cloud infrastructure mm -hmm. yes yeah okay and then you probably probably need to fix the credential service accounts for the active directory also check the how to connect to the console of the Apex cloud. okay let's move on um, endpoint requirements shortly um, yeah, we support Windows 10, 7 and 8.1 Windows servers, unless you don't have uh, deep security from us for the server platform, but you can always use Apex 1 as well. <clears throat> um, system requirements to gig RAM minimum and two gig disk space. And if you're using those additional modules, then three gig recommend yeah I, I know that sometimes we we have the customer some customers still have very old xp uh, even seven is out of support um so we can still uh, i think apex one of services can still manage old uh, office can eg client uh tony yeah so and in this case for example a customer who is migrating even this machine, this Windows XP machine to Apex One, the agent will stay Office Can EG or if it's Can Eleven, Office Can Eleven, and but managed by Apex One as a services. And um, not to mention uh, for Mac users as well, we have this uh, client or agent. Next, okay, next step. Okay, so we don't see this now when using the demo, but I captured some of the important ones here. So you connect to customer licensing portal. When you have provided key, there will be Apex One as a service with the seats visible an expiration date and then you open the actual console from the link what you see on the licensing portal and if you do it first time it will do the spin up of the instance with different steps you have options to migrate we can check this maybe with another slide but anyway you choose the region european data center and language alternatives, English, French, German. And after that, you receive an email, which you are using on the licensing portal, stating about your account and 
ってまいりました。Yeah, and maybe also we can mention、uh, the point about、uh, the licensing model for Apex One as a service is Tony, where it requires so the license, and this license is linked to what we call a smart protection suite,、um, subscription based、um, uh, model. Uh, so, any customer who has、uh, this、uh, smart protection suite or smart protection for endpoints, smart protection complete, they can initiate their、um, Apex One SaaS instance, as you mentioned here. And for the other one who still have legacy license, they can, have a, they can click on Start Free Trial to, to have a taste of Apex One as a services. We, we see it on, the, on your screen. Yes. Okay. All right. And this is something that can be seen then on the first time looking to the Apex Central as a service. So you see that the name is then Apex Central. I will show here how my test licenses Look like so when I have logged into the customer licensing portal, I open the console. So, and, 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 and it's already provisioned, so that's why you have, you have direct access to any right. Yes, I took those screen captures for that. So, quick start guide is the one that pops out the first time logging. And this is basically what we are about to do then during this demo. All right. And Here we can quickly look how it looks like for the office scan point of view. So, as this is the control manager, similar, we will have a managed services or servers here and server re registration page. And this is a single sign on as well. So, you will have a dedicated Instance record in here. And when you click that, it will open the console for the Apex One as a service console. That, so that, I, think, that I think is nearly uh, uh, not needed anymore, let's say for 99% of activities. So maybe at the migration phase, we, we, the customer can still. I need to access to the Apex One server、uh, UI itself, but、uh, for day to day activities, it's、uh, mainly Apex One Central, so the main,、uh, the main page we have seen before. Indeed. So, if we quickly look here how it looks, we don't have a configuration anymore available. So, you would go to Apex Central. Policies, policy management is the same way as in the control management. All the near right. Here. Okay. Yes. So, where we are next, Denis? Yeah, let's go forward with the next phase. So, what we want to do is to, if you're using an、um, on prem Active Directory, you would need to download this、um, tool from the Apex Central console. So, you go to Administration, Settings, and Active Directory and Compliance Settings. From that page, you will enable Active Directory settings. So, if you use on prem, You will download a CLI tool which 
is specific for for this uh, Apex One as a service instance. So when you every time click that download active directory synchronization tool here, it will always generate a new key for a specific tool and uh, disable the old ones. So that might be good to know then if you download it uh, several times from here. So what you do with that tool, it's in a zip file, you will download it on the Active Directory directly or some other host which can then connect to Active Directory and also connect to Apex One as a service. So all connections are then from this tool to outbound TCP 443 port um, secured access. And when that tool works, we can see here that it gives a green, <coughs> green light from the domain controller, which I was using, and the last synchronization time. So as this is CLI tool, you will uh, then create a configuration and command line which synchronizes in the end is then used on the scheduled task. So I did in my lab this test of um, every hour synchronizing unit. And this helps to have all all users synchronized with Apex One as services and then to apply the the right policy based on group and username or whatever. Yes. So I tried to highlight here the all the configurations. So you would have that extracted folder. From there you will find the specific <clears throat> key and on that folder there is adsyncagentool.exe and with the minus i in the end it will start con basic configuration and for that you would need to have obviously admin, admin rights and uh, what you need to type then is the uh, domain controller or active directory IP address or fully qualified domain name, <clears throat> user that logs in from this tool, and then provide password and basically click N or next or enter any key. All right. And after that, you will do the minus S, which do the synchronization once. Yeah, all of this, all of this is uh, in the or. Uh, administration guide or on the on the KB, I guess, Tony. Yes, everything is very well documented. Of course. Okay, what happens then when you have done the synchronization? <clears throat> you will have a Apex Central and directories view. And from there, you should see that which active directories are synchronized. And in this case, we see the my lab environment trend local visible there, which we can browse them. And when you look for the users, it should list then available users from the from the active directory. And th this has been sometimes a question why it cannot see the endpoints on on the listing here so this is just a note that uh, those will appear there when you install install the apex um, agent on the endpoint and it can be seen on here and it will then enhance the information by using this active directory synchronization when it lists the endpoint Yes, right. that's the place there. And the plan is then to check if we can access all the 
devices and use the same procedure too. So, so if we, it's pretty good diagram here, so we can explain everything because, so usually the customers have, uh, let me draw if I can. So usually we have this kind of uh, traffic. So we have the endpoint connecting directly to, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not an artist for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to make, <laughs> okay, let's try again. Uh, okay, I can do an arrow. Can I do an arrow? No, it doesn't work neither. Uh, uh, okay, this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> we, have, we have this kind of traffic usually. And uh, and then you have, we have Office Scan component and TMCM going to, let's say, cloud uh, to get uh, signatures and data and everything, right? Reputation. So, but from there, uh, we are removing, we will remove this component, right? And yes. we will have, so you said it here, this synchronization with the AD. And then we have directly the agent communicating with the SaaS instance. So the good thing is the administrator can go directly to SaaS instance from anywhere. And then any endpoint, because here in your diagram, it's let's say inside, um, it's inside the network. But in fact, when you have a small site or home office user like many does right now, they go directly, they are connected directly to the Apex One SaaS instance to get their policy up to date, to report the log and, and report the status. Yes. Very convenient way. All right. Ah, draw, draw a race. Oh, uh, we can go. Ahead. Okay, let's check if remote desktop is still on. So what we had here, I have a office scan server. There is a SQL server connected to that, an active directory with the DNS and everything, and two endpoints, one Windows 10 and one Windows 7. And from that lab, there is a access to the, our cloud service. So I will then try to show here how the procedure looks like. So here, I hope you can see them. Yeah, we see everything. Scan. Good. So here we have agent management and our domain visible here and <clears throat> three agents. One is in this Office Scan server itself, and then those two Windows 10, Windows 7. So for, for the Office Scan EG, they are fully up to date, right? Yes, should be by now. <laughs> okay, and uh, we don't have control manager in this environment as many customers don't use it for the policies. So I left that out. Yeah. But you can also migrate configuration from, from control manager to Apex One as a service platform. Yeah, typically customer below 5,000 user, they don't deploy control manager. They just have the office can server as, as you state. Yeah. So let's see. This is how the Windows 7 look like. So if you double click uh, Office Scan here, we can see that it's connected to this with the features. Okay. The same should be on the Windows 10. So great, now we have a, a, a demo 
on premise of a scanning geo environment with two agents. Yes, this simulates on prem even if it's on map. <laughs> okay, so next step. All right. What you um, let's see how the <clears throat> console looks from here. So accessing licensing portal to receive this link. One. All right. And from Apex Central, what we want to do now, we want to synchronize the on prem AD information. So administration settings. Active Directory and compliance. And uh, even if you clear old data here, it leaves this old connection here visible. Okay. And when you activate this one, and if I would have that old uh, tool available, and if I would save now, it would keep synchronizing but i deleted everything and cleared the data from here so when this link here is used now it gives a warning as well that your previous tools will be enabled to com communicate because this generates a completely new tool and new certificate so we download this one to this office scan server <clears throat> and extract I will put it somewhere lower so it's easier to access from there so directly to three <laughs> yeah not best practice but it's good enough for the demo <laughs> good for me <laughs> okay and what to do next we will save this setting here success and then we will observe after we've done the configuration that what happens on this. This here. So let's go and see. Okay. Tool folder there. Yes. We access that one. So the first X executable, let me try that one. And that magic keyword was minus I for the first one. Configuration. So press any key to start configuration. So we will use our lab. Mm -hmm. 
No, I can suddenly remember that. So Too much information to remind her <laughs> for your lab, <laughs> Tony. So many Short many. night. Okay. okay, so one configured. So you just you just in fact so you just enter the information to connect to the server itself, but all information to connect to SAS is already into the agent in the synchronization agent. Yes, exactly. So now we type N now for other configuration. No advanced settings at this point. So what we see then that configuration was successful. And then we try to see if the minus S, which was for the synchronization itself, works. Okay, so this is the interesting information files uploaded successful. So if you don't have this enabled here, or if you have generated another one by downloading this link, you won't be able to see this uh, upload successful. Files encrypted appears there as long as it can connect to the domain controller and download the information. But the upload is when it accesses the Office Apex One as a server. Okay, and what we don't do now is the scheduled task, which you can use to do this um, do this commando. For example, every hour or second hour or once in a day, depending on your. Active directory activities. Okay, now it has passed a bit. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. We have 1044, which is supposed to be now. Just, just synchronize, right? Yes. So, what we see then is user endpoints directories. And this one don't have any more configuration link here, so you would have <coughs> your Active Directory structure. <coughs> and one thing I mentioned is that you don't see the endpoints until you have uh, installed the Apex One agent on the computer. So all you can see at this point is the users here and here then. Okay. And I think that's uh, good for now for this. So now you, you can start, to, you can keep going to see how, how to migrate the agent. Yes. So. Step number five for our today's agenda. <clears throat> we can use in the new platform completely new um, setup and test with that, or we can migrate Apex One as a service configuration from the Office Can server, and we can do the policies. 
and if there won't be any policy on on the <clears throat> this apex central configuration in that um, installation file uh, there is any file which contain contains a base policy That was from friends, I believe. I'm not an expert on that, but <clears throat> so um, you get a base policy anyway, even if you don't have anything configured on the console. <clears throat> How the migration of the policies will look like we go to we go to apex one the console and from there we will get apex one settings export tool the latest one because it's in the cloud and when downloading that one to office scan server you will execute that export exit tool and it will immediately generate uh, Office can server configuration in a zip file. It will generate Apex agent policies that are visible there. And it will also generate the data loss prevention settings as a zip file. So here, don't know if it, this can be seen very well, but when we have that Apex one agent policies zip file there, we will upload that one to to Trend Micro Apex Central, and then it should be visible. Visible on there, and that is something that we could do on the next. And um, yeah, recommendation would be to generate uh, policies for the least for the Windows 10 and uh, according to best practices because we've noticed that many customers might use uh, configurations where, where they don't have a, uh, all the important features enabled that are required nowadays for the today's threats. For example, behavior monitoring and predictive machine learning are very important ones. <coughs> Okay, let's try to figure out how that goes. Any you appear still there? Okay, coming back now. <clears throat> so, still streaming? Yeah. All right. <laughs> my bad, uh, my bad. Uh, I've been. Uh, <laughs> He's been home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's lockdown and uh, delivery and stuff and food. I cannot say no, <laughs> so I didn't want to disturb Tony. So <laughs> keep going, keep going. Good one. <clears throat> okay, so we will do the next demo and we will download from the Apex One console this tool, export tool into the Office Scan server, execute it, get configuration zip file. And import that one to Apex Central as a service console and the policy. Okay. 
<clears throat> so we are in Apex Central now. We go to One console administration. Server migration. And let's see if this is very well visible, but here we have download Apex One settings export tool. So as we are now in Office Scan Server itself and do the download, it will land on the right place. And here on the same place, when it generates the um, Office Scan Server settings, you can import those one on this place. But we will do just the policy and import that policy to the Apex Central on the server. So this is if customer wants to migrate a policy also. So it's not mandatory, but it's just to keep uh, the previous settings. So, but they have also the opportunity to recreate uh, maybe a fresh policy, Tony. Maybe in some case, it, it, it's better, especially with all the new features uh, like ransomware protection and so on. It can make sense. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, did it do anything? So when executing this one on Office Scan Server, it should then be able to block the configuration folder and unnecessary configuration. And as you can see here, we have agent policies, data loss prevention policies, and server, Office Scan Server setting. Okay, let's 
see if we had actual configurations because I think I've spinned this up. No, it doesn't matter how to turn it. In this case, no. So back to Apex Central Console. We go to policy management. And since there is no policy, it will always pop up this one. We are in Apex One Security Agent. And by clicking create here or there, we will receive a new policy. And here we could now configure on the scratch something and as you can see this is the new feature now this new layout for the policies so if you don't like this one you can always go back to the other view by clicking that one so when creating policy here now it looks more like the original So cancel here. Let's switch that back to the new one. And now, instead of creating policy from the scratch, we will use the <coughs> zip file that we extracted from the orchestra. And uh, data loss policies or data loss prevention policies. Apex one agent policies. Let's see if that gives us something. So there it is. Okay, good. So you have imported the Office Can Exit policy into the Apex one SAS. So same same setting as before. So let's say it or customer can, so so they can do a one to one migration, same features, same settings, right? Yes. Great, great. Okay. Policy. We can define this do we have enough time by the way um uh, all right we are close to the end to the original plan so how much time do you need more tony oh well, if we want to check the last parts we can see from here and uh, there are different ways again how to migrate i i like this way when you have a connection from office can server you will use the manage agent free you will point um, to Apex One server, so not the control manager, but you will find the server registration. You will find this uh, unique for this customer URL. You will use it here, and server ports defaults four four three and HTTP eighty. So as long as Office Can Server can connect to this URL it will be able to tell then that to agents which I'm moving. For example, this Windows 10 that, okay, try to contact this URL and keep going with that furthermore. You have also this um, new pre-assessment installer on the Apex Central and here vaguely can see the steps what it does you can look at here maybe it's easier so you download the installer or you get a download link you can distribute users and it's all again unique for this uh, instance this customer yeah. instance. if if i'm right uh, i think the pre-assessment installer is um 
is typically used in two case uh, when we have a customer, new customer, uh, having other some Trend Micro solution and they want to migrate to our Trend Micro Apex uh, SaaS solution, so they can use that to be sure that uh, um, any endpoint they have all prerequisite to migrate and so on. And the other use case is some old endpoint and to be sure that again all the hardware and soft is ready to migrate. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a special use case this one. Whereas on the uh, five A uh let's say the bay is a previous one, a migration step. A migration yeah. sorry uh, method. So I was able to find here on on uh, my Windows seven that it didn't have enough disk space. So it was able to install this um, pre-assessment installer and after a while it tried to download the Apex One agent, wasn't able to, so it reports back to this uh, assessment tool that okay not enough uh, disk space or RAM memory. Yeah. So this is the case where you would use this. And yeah like this bandwidth saving aspect so if instead of 10,000 clients going through the firewall or perimeter to the cloud and downloading 300 meg or 200, 300 meg Apex One agent, it makes more sense to download it and distribute yeah. it. So it's especially, it's especially true when uh, we have customer with very big central site. So for example, two, three, four thousand, maybe more user um behind the same firewall as you say so in this case usually software management to deploy the apex one agent is maybe uh, more relevant particularly in case of home office user or distributed user i think the, the first method is, is is very relevant anyway because it's distributed access yeah and then there is a okay i can maybe initiate that one in the meanwhile because it takes a while and then we can check the last remaining slides and check afterwards how this goes this migration yeah so we are in um, apex central um we go to uh, apex one i'm uh, sorry apex central and we can check here Actually, it's visible here as well, but this is the quickest place. When you are on the Apex Central, you go to check the URL, specific URL, which you would need to use here. Or fully qualified domain. And let's say that Windows 10 wants to be moved. Take away ports and and everything. Use the default ones and hit the move. So now the office can notify the agent that it should start contacting the Apex One cloud. So we can yeah. leave this. And it will it will it will happen, right? Yeah. So now it clicks protection at risk because it's uh, connecting to the new one. And here is the. So it hasn't downloaded yet, updated Apex agent. It will use this Office Can agent and and yeah. keep downloading stuff. And it will require a reboot at some point. And, um, so the, the agent knows is he has to upgrade. So the office can agent is still running, protecting, but now he, he will he get the notification he has to migrate. So once he will change his connect uh, connection server, he will then download the new binaries, doing silent install and ask to reboot. Right, Tony? Correct, Mundo. Okay. What what I like with the approach that you you show, 
I know that we are able to select a bunch uh, of um, of endpoints on uh, on the Office Scan server. So we can select a group, we can select a branch in the directory, we can select multiple machines and doing the right click and move. So customer can do it step by step. They can try with one, two agents and then can migrate five, 500 agents directly. So it's pretty flexible approach. Yes, that is a good move. First, you would like to obviously test with your own laptop and get used to the settings and everything. And then you pick up the test user groups from different locations, maybe, and different type of users, different type of machines. So you can collect enough data how it uh, goes with those different type of endpoint. And then you maybe plan from there to make a bunch of locations at the time and observe how your perimeter handles the traffic during the upgrade. So, so you, can, you can show what happens on the endpoint because... Um, yeah, maybe that's <clears throat> more interesting. Yeah, not directly on the slide. On the, because, because as you said, it, it takes time. So you, you made some screenshot. Yeah, we can check that one. Yeah, just here. Here, that so there's is. different steps. CPU goes up, network, download data. At this point, there is Apex uh, One Agent. I used policy, which includes every feature. So it kept downloading those integrated modules for the vulnerability protection, application control, and endpoint sensor. Yes, yeah, so this then, is a value step. This is a value step we can see on the agent, right? So we're yes. doing the migration. <clears throat> Silent installer. Admin will see then on the GUI. Okay. Admin successfully applied policy because I used this kind of uh, best practice policy where everything was enabled and and um, recommended exclusions activate. Okay, I included here some useful knowledge base articles. So more detailed steps, how to migrate those uh, Office Scan XG service back one settings. Um, if you use Intune, Microsoft Intune for your endpoint management, you can uh, check very detailed instructions how to deploy agents with that. Um, then obviously you want to test different features that are there. Here are instructions for that. And then last, um, best practice guides. There are lots of other good best practice guides, but especially here, Apex Central document which uh, gives lots of hints and tricks and tips yeah so and all of we will publish all of these links into uh, the youtube video description later so we, we, with the video record everything will be included so our a viewer will be able to to access this later um i think it takes time anyway to see everything happening <clears throat> Let's see if I have any. Any settings here I can use. Yeah, no worries. Oh, great. Okay, let's so, see <clears throat> what happened here. Still on the office. Can we can maybe speed up something here, but if we need to quit, yeah. All the things are on the yeah slides visible. Uh, if I if I remember well, it takes many minutes, maybe 
10 to 15 so we won't wait uh, during the stream for that i think we you have shoved everything and we have the principle there tony yes yes so i think we can close the stream with uh, uh with this last word so um thanks tony for uh, all the explanation i think it has been great details step by step so and um you can contact um two of your viewers and the uh, email um, directly into our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it. You can post comments to ask any question and we'll be happy to help you and to answer any of your question. Um, so, and big thanks to you, Tony, who prepared everything, all the content and all the demo there. Um, and to everyone, we stay uh, available. Stay safe and enjoy your day. So thanks. Keep in track uh, with our YouTube channel. Don't hesitate to subscribe and to have the, fir the future um, tech stream. Thank yes, you. Likewise, Pierre. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.